After five years, the country's largest citizen science project to map the distribution and abundance of New Zealand birds, the New Zealand Bird Atlas, has now been completed. To tell us more about this is Dan Bergen from the National Bird Atlas team. Thanks for joining us today, Dan. Kia ora, Jack. So what is a bird atlas? A bird atlas is basically a huge effort to cover a set um, space and over a set period of time and gather as many bird observations as possible. There's lots overseas which have a really uh, strong breeding focus, but the difference with this um, atlas for Aotearoa New Zealand was that it was five years all year round and just basically trying to light up the country with bird observations. Yeah, so who was contributing to the atlas? We had over 1,700 people, and um, it's a Birds New Zealand uh, project. So this is actually the third atlas that's been run by the society, and the first one was way back in the 60s. And so there's a strong participation from Birds New Zealand members, but we were trying to advocate beyond that as well. And so there were just members of the public, bird enthusiasts, basically, who were getting involved. And then as part of our efforts, we were engaging with Department of Conservation, Regional Council councils and other key stakeholders who might have been undertaking bird monitoring such as five minute bird counts and getting encourage them to upload their observations as well to really just sort of bolster the efforts and and to see how how awesome the community's efforts were so people contributing i could have contributed if i saw a tour in my back garden Absolutely. Yeah, that was the biggest thing. And that's one of the wonderful things about it is you didn't have to be a professional ornithologist or researcher to contribute. This was community science at its best. And that was what was so um, I feel empowering for people was that they could, like you said, put their observations in their backyard, because often it's only you who are seeing those birds. And that could contribute to this national um, uh, sort of science project and and really really contribute to bird conservation and research so I, I think that was for me personally that was one of the amazing things about it was seeing people almost a light bulb go over their head and just be like oh man I, I can contribute and i can make a difference with the information gathered over the course of this project what does the atlas tell us about new zealand's current bird populations <laughs> Yes, yeah, so a great question. And I think now we have finished the data collection period, we're moving into this analysis and we'll start to sort of be able to um, take some of those and sort of zoom in a bit further onto lots of species. So myself and the rest of the coordination team, we're going to start writing it um, up over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, there's a few things that have stuck out that possibly we're going to explore. Um, we think possibly New Zealand pipit might be in decline. And um, there's lots of sort of local and regional um, aspects for different species that we want to explore. Um, and the exciting thing about this is that that data set, it's such a nationally significant data set. And there's probably decades worth of research um, that can be done out of it. So I'm sure that there'll be even more people, um, as well as ourselves, who start to pull out these stories about how our birds are faring. So anyone can access the results. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all publicly viewable online. That's the wonderful thing about eBird. So it's this community science tool that the Cornell Lab of Ornithology produced um, over in the US and it's free um, and you can upload your bird observations. You can view other people's bird observations. And so all of this Atlas data is publicly viewable. And for people who are undertaking research or conservation management, um, you can request to download the data for whatever your research or management question is, and then that can inform your um, work, which again is hugely powerful and um, really important because we want um, those people in those positions to have up-to-date information to make informed decisions for our money. Absolutely. So at a glance, even though the results have kind of only just come in, what does the Atlas yep. tell us about Hawke's Bay's current bird population? Um, yeah, so the uh, interesting thing, so again, you can explore all of this online. So um, in Hawke's Bay, the most widely distributed species um, across the whole uh, region was Rero Rero, so grey warbler, and that was followed by silver eye toho and Manipango um, blackbird as well. So those are the top three. Um, there were 127 species documented within the region, 
and um, nearly uh, 10,000 checklists uploaded. So a checklist is just a list of um, birds that people have seen over a set period of time. And nearly 250 people contributed efforts and um, bird observations to the area. So really significant um, effort. And each region had a number of grid squares. And that was just to help us gauge effort so that um, we could see where areas needed more effort and where people hadn't been. So there were 161. Each one of those was 10 by 10 kilometers. And um, 97% of those received data, which is really impressive because there's there's a few remote spots in, in the region that are, that are hard to get to. So again, a huge effort from, from the region and visiting people as well. Were there any great surprises from the results? Like was anyone uh, reporting seeing a moa or any extinct, extinct <laughs> birds? Um, no, I think, <laughs> I think, um, there was no surprises like that. I think there was a couple of April fools, um, memes and, and pictures that went up online uh, over the course of the project. Um, but there's been some interesting sightings, some vagrant species. So, um, birds that have been maybe blown off course that have popped up in Aotearoa. Um, and, and so, not necessarily in Hawke's Bay, but there was a frigate bird seen up um, around the Coromandel recently. And um, yeah, lots of l- lots more to explore, as I said. Um, and and that's, that's really, really exciting. It kind of pertains to the data quality. Obviously, we wanted lots of people to get involved and lots of data to be going in, but we wanted to ensure that the data quality was something um, that was remembered by participants. And so we had these kind of recommendations on how to enter your data. And the community really got behind that. And um, we also have a a, a really passionate group of volunteer reviewers who go through the data um, for anything like a mower that might sort of <laughs> pop up um, and be like, are you sure about that? Do you have any pictures? <laughs> um, and just to sort of validate that. So yeah, it's been it's been a huge community effort. I can't understate that. Um, I can't overstate that enough, basically. So. And if people would like to learn more about the New Zealand Bird Atlas, uh, where should they head? Yeah, so um, you can head to eBird.org slash Atlas NZ and you can explore the whole portal. I know, Jack, you've had a look um, and um, you can explore all the data there. And then what we're going to be doing is producing an ebook that hopefully will come out in 12 to 18 months uh, that will explore more of the data and, and things like you've been asking, you know, what sort of patterns are we starting to see, particularly comparing it to the last Atlas. Um, and I think the biggest thing as well is um, for anyone who has participated participated or would like to participate, you can enter data retrospectively, but also we're encouraging people just to continue uploading their bird observations wherever they are and at whatever time to eBird um, across Aotearoa um, because the more eyes and ears out there, the better, especially if a mower pops up. Um, and uh, we just want this to continue because um, this is really empowering, empowering for people and the value of the data is it, it's it's really significant and something that we want more and more people to get behind. So we, we kind of want this atlas to be seen as a bit of a step forward um, and, and just get more and more people excited and involved with eBird in Aotearoa. Awesome. Thank you very much for your hard work, Dan. I'm sure a lot of people around the country really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, let's hope we see those results come in very positively. Appreciate that, Jack. Thanks so much for having us on.